The story we're going to read today is called Saturdays and Tea Cakes. Story by Lester L. Laminac. Paintings by Chris Soenpite. When I was nine or ten years old, I couldn't wait for Saturdays. Every Saturday I got up early, dressed, and rolled my bicycle out of the garage. Every Saturday I coasted down our long, steep drive, slowing only enough to make the turn onto Thompson Street, then left onto Bells Mill Road. Pedal, 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 past Mrs. Cofield's house. Pedal, 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 around the horse pasture and up the hill past the cemetery where my grandfather was buried. Pedal, 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 past Mrs. Grace Owen's house and on up to Chandler's Phillips 66. Every Saturday, I coasted over the black hose by the gas pump, just to make the bell ring. Then I dropped my kickstand and checked the air in my tires. I stopped at Chandler's for another reason, too. That's where I crossed the highway that ran right through the center of our town. My mother always said, you stop and you look both ways when you get to Chandler's. I don't care if the light is green. I'll hear about it if you don't. And I knew she would, too. In our little town, everyone knew everybody and told everything to anyone who would listen. So I always looked both ways. Pedal, 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 across Ross Street, then left for a slow coast down behind the bank of Heflin, where I turned right onto Bedwell and whoosh! I zoomed downhill as fast as I dared. Pedal, 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 up the next hill and left onto Almond Street. It was a long stretch to Mr. White's. I always stopped there to catch my breath in the shade of the old oak tree. One more small hill, pedal, 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 and then a right onto Gaither Street. Now I could see my grandmother's drive. One, two, three, four driveways, and one last left turn. This was where my tires gave up their humming on pavement and began the crunching of gravel. Just before reaching Mamma's back porch, I slammed on my brakes, sending a shower of tiny pebbles into her flowers. Every Saturday, Mamma was sitting there in her old metal glider. Freak, crack. Freak, crack, sipping a cup of red diamond coffee and waiting. She was waiting for me. No one else, just me. Every Saturday, Mamma called out, Come on in this house. Let's have us a bite to eat. In Mamma's big kitchen, sunlight poured through the windows like a waterfall and spilled over the countertops, cooling up on the checkerboard floor. Every Saturday, she had hot biscuits, sweet butter, and golden eagle syrup waiting on the kitchen table. Every Saturday, she poured a little coffee in my cup and filled the rest with milk and two spoonfuls of sugar. Then, before long, Mamma said, we best get clear these dishes away and get at that yard before it gets too hot. I followed her out to the back porch. Let me put a little water on these ferns, she said. You go on ahead to the car house. That's what Mamma called the garage. I'll be out directly. By the time I pulled the lawnmower from the garage, Mamma was already in the garden picking plump ripe tomatoes for our lunch. Every Saturday I pulled the starter rope again and again while the mower sputtered and spit. Finally, that old mower started, and I struggled to push it through the dew-wet grass, leaving row after row of fresh stripes on the lawn. 
From time to time, the mower choked on mouthfuls of wet grass that clung to the blades and to my bare legs. But by early afternoon, the dew pearls were gone, the grass was mowed and dry, and I was soaked with sweat. Every Saturday, I pushed the mower back into the garage, trudged to the back porch, and flopped onto the old glider. Rick, crack, rick, crack. Mamma soon appeared with a tall glass of sweet iced tea. You just cool off and rest a spell. I'm going to make us a bite to eat. Before long, she came back with two big tomato sandwiches on hamburger buns. Every Saturday, I gobbled mine down like a hungry dog, but she nibbled at hers like a bird. And Nanette, I'm some good tomatoes now, she said. I know how you like a good tomato sandwich. Don't they taste a whole heap better? when you just picked them. We sat there a while listening to the calls of the blue jays and the rhythm of that old glider. Then Mamma looked at me sort of sideways and said, I reckon I know a boy who'd like something sweet to eat. And I grinned. Yes, ma'am, I reckon you do. Come on then, Mamma said, heading toward the door. Let's get in this kitchen and see if we can't make us a mess. Every Saturday, she spread a cloth over the red countertop and scattered a fistful of flour across it, sending a cloud into the air. Then she set out a big bowl. Mamma dipped a china teacup into the canister of flour, scooped out a cupful, and skimmed over the top with her finger. Then she dumped the flour into the bowl and added sugar from her black cookie jar. She let the mis mixture drift through her hands like I sifted sand at the beach. When it felt right, Mamma said, Look in the frigidaire, that's what she called her refrigerator, and find me two sticks of blue bonnet. I pulled open the refrigerator and got out the margarine. I unwrapped the sticks and dropped them into the bowl. I mixed and mashed and mixed and mashed until the ingredients disappeared into a paste. It was smooth and pale yellow and smelled like fresh cotton candy at the county fair. Mamma pinched off a little to taste. I spec we need a little more sugar in this. She sprinkled sugar until the dough tasted just the way she thought it ought to. Now. Get me three eggs, she said. I tapped the first egg too hard and made, making it splatter under the counter and down the side of the bowl. I reckon we can call that half an egg, Mamma said. Here, let me show you how to do it. Just tap them easy like and pull the shell apart over the bowl like this. Now, you do the next one. It was hard work blending those eggs into the mix with a long wooden spoon. Mamma pinched another taste. My goodness, buddy, we didn't put no vanilla in here. Reach up in that cabinet and get me down the bottle of vanilla flavor. When the dough tasted just right, Mamma rolled it out onto the flour-dusted cloth. Then I cut out the tea cakes with the rim of an old tin can. We carefully lifted the circles onto a cookie sheet and put them into the oven to bake. 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Those 15 minutes seem to last forever. Are they ready, Mamma? Not yet, buddy. Are they ready now, Mamma? Not yet, buddy. Let's give them a little bit longer. Are they ready yet, Mamma? I reckon they might be. She opened the oven door and the kitchen filled with a smell sweeter than summer gardenias, the smell of tea cakes. Every Saturday I reached for one still steaming on the baking sheet. You better wait, buddy. They gonna be mighty hot just yet. We waited until the tea cakes were cool enough to lift from the baking sheet. Then we set them off on a plate. Every Saturday I ate one, 
and then another, and I looked at Mama. Is that all you want, buddy? You be sure to eat all you want. We made them tea cakes just for you. When I had eaten all I could, she set a few off on a saucer for herself and put the rest on a big sheet of aluminum foil. She folded the edges into a little handle at the top. Now, you put these out there in your bicycle basket so you won't forget them. Every Saturday, as I pedaled over the gravel again and out Mamma's drive, I glanced back over my shoulder. Every Saturday, Mamma was there, sitting on her old metal glider and waiting, waving. She was waving to me. No one else. Just me. Don't worry, Mamma. I won't ever forget the end.